Cairo, the capital of Egypt and largest city of the Arab world. It's also been a prominent mainstay in Western film. But how did a city over 6,000 miles away become such a significant cultural icon since virtually the start of the American cinema industry? Tonight, I'm going to answer that question and prove to you the cultural significance of Cairo through the lens of Hollywood productions. I'm Carter J. Allen, prospective filmmaker taking Persian 3813, and this is... The Pyramid Scene. Our story begins 100 years ago, on the 29th of November, 1922. Famed archaeologist Howard Carter opened up Tutankhamun's tomb and brought many of the remains back with him to the West. More significant than any physical items, however, was the fame and worldwide renown that the tomb received after being unearthed after more than 3,000 years. King Tut was hardly a special character in Egyptian history, but having a relatively well-filled and haphazardly unrobbed tomb meant there were plenty of buried items of which the world could use to form perceptions of Cairo. This was the first instance of this culture seeping into the West widespread, inspiring stories of the 1920s and setting fashion trends that are still followed today in the United States. Charting the history of films about Cairo was a more difficult task, however, as it's always been such an integral part of the Western film market. One only needs to look at the historic Grauman's Egyptian cinema in Hollywood for proof. My solution was sorting the cinematic evolution of Cairo through Hollywood into three eras and twelve films. First, we have the Modest Era, named so because many of the films were from pre-code Hollywood, and, either as a result of technical limitations or a public lack of information about Egypt, tended to be modest in size and scope. Representations of Cairo at this point in time could be somewhat inaccurate, but were mostly harmless. Many films, such as 1933's A Night in Cairo, were actually about Egyptian characters and attempted to tell Egyptian stories in an endearing way. I'd be remiss if I didn't discuss the film that no doubt introduced many Westerners to Egypt to begin with, which is of course 1933's The Mummy. Remember King Tut's tomb from earlier? Well, that was what directly inspired Universal Pictures to produce this movie, following the success of Dracula and Frankenstein two years prior. A producer by the name of Carl Lamel Jr. commissioned story editor Richard Shaver to find a novel that could turn into an Egyptian-themed horror film. The problem was that in 1933, Richard couldn't find any, so instead he lifted Arthur Conan Doyle's short story, The Ring of Thoth, changed the character to Imhotep, and moved the story to Egypt. That's right. Perhaps the most well-known American-made film about Cairo originally had no narrative basis there whatsoever. As we move towards the end of this era in cinema, we see the modesty starting to break down, and the path becomes paved for extremely glamorized and hyperbolic tellings of stories like Cleopatra, which was the most expensive film ever made at the time, almost bankrupting 20th Century Fox, and Lawrence of Arabia. Still tales inherent to Egypt, many movies of this time seemed interested in exploring the real-world history of Cairo, even with a touch of embellishment here or there. The success of Lawrence of Arabia, however, inspires another trend of using the Middle East setting as a backdrop to Western protagonists, despite the film only spending small amounts of time actually in Cairo on screen. It's here, between the 60s and 70s, we reach the mystic era of American Egyptian cinema, which is where we start to see the emergence of problems with Hollywood takes on Cairo. Many films produced at this time were merely using Cairo as a backdrop while prominent Western characters took center stage. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that inherently, but Egyptian characters that were once prominent on the silver screen were now merely background actors, and in some cases derogatory comic relief. There is still a lack of public understanding of Egyptian culture, which these films capitalize on by defining it as simply exotic, mystic, and sometimes hostile. As they're merely telling American stories in Cairo, and not Cairo stories, they don't much care for accurate or just representation of Egyptian culture. James Bond, Indiana Jones, and Rick O'Connell all lead their respective films with an emphasis on American heroes in Cairo. Some of them do a decent job of exploring elements of their adopted culture. Others... They buggers, they smell, they bite, they spit. <laughs> Disgusting. I think they're adorable. Good job, come on, old baby. Good job, come on. Not so much. It got to the point where proper representation was so poor, or offending, people would start protesting and attacking MGM and Fox Cinemas in Cairo, though that was closer to the start of the era than the end. We do still see major studios, like DreamWorks for example, sinking tens of millions of dollars into production simply trying to tell Egyptian stories about Egyptians. So it's not like the tradition had died out in any way. Finally, we arrive at what I've coined the modern era, 
While Egyptian-based cinema was never technically characterized the same way as other geography was in films as, say, with a Western, I'd argue the genre has seen a decline in popularity with the past few years. Some films still suffer from problems lingering from the Mystic Age, films like Gods of Egypt and X-Men Apocalypse, with the latter suggesting the pyramid's purpose is not as a burial tomb, but instead a mutant power transferring station. I'd imagine it's the cultural equivalent of suggesting the Statue of Liberty was a, really a giant robot or something. I don't imagine people would be too happy. Still, we see with films like Jumper that people are willing to produce interesting narratives that utilize Cairo without derogating it, and we see with wildly successful films like Aladdin, people are still inclined to see movies inspired by Middle Eastern culture, even if that film takes place in an imaginary or far-off land. Perhaps one reason Cairo hosted so dominant in the film industry is the world-famous architecture, namely the Pyramids of Giza. If your film is shot in or about Cairo, there's a fairly strong chance it will make an appearance. Part of the appeal was the long-standing mysteries surrounding their inception, but as visually striking as they are, it's very well understood what they're for nowadays, and thus any indication of uncertainty could be seen as irresponsible, deceptive behavior of the filmmaker. The reason I make this video essay is not to criticize filmmakers of old by holding them up to modern cultural standards, but it is to suggest that filmmakers of the future can do better, be better, Produce films with heart and care to Cairo in the Middle East. Don't show another country or its people in an unfairly negative light, but also don't pretend every film is meant to advertise to tourists. Show places as they are. Paint a picture of Cairo as it is. Hopefully, I've proven to you that Cairo has gone through different stages of critique and glamour in the American movie industry. And if you, as a filmmaker or even just an audience member, keep an eye out for those stereotypes and tropes in the future, then perhaps we can improve the world of America Cairo cinema one pyramid scene at a time.